Kosh Tepe Canal. Comprehensive Overview. 1. The Idea and Initiative. The Kosh Tepe Canal is an ambitious irrigation project in northern Afghanistan intended to transform over 550,000 hectares of desert into arable farmland. Its roots trace back to earlier Afghan governments with feasibility studies supported by USAID. The current Taliban government prioritized the canal as a flagship national project, launching construction in early 2022. As of August 2025, the Kosh Tepe Canal project in northern Afghanistan has reached substantial milestones and remains a top national infrastructure priority. Completion Status The second phase of the canal is approximately 90% complete in terms of excavation, with the main intake structures, headworks, about 80% finished. The first phase was finished in 2023, and rapid progress continues in all active sections. Construction features. Over 2,000 machines are active on site, and work is being carried out mainly by Afghan engineers and labor. Eleven major road and rail bridges are under construction across the canal's course, supporting connectivity for people and goods. Route and scale. The canal runs 285 kilometers from the Kaldar district in Balkh province, passing Jawzyan and ending in Faryabs and Hoy district. Its width ranges from 64 meters to over 150, averaging about 100 meters, and its depth is around 8 meters. Aims. Once operational, the canal will divert up to 10 billion cubic meters of water annually from the Amu Darya River intended to irrigate more than 550,000 hectares of farmland, transforming desert into productive fields and boosting Afghanistan's food and economic security. Regional and political context. The Kosh Tepe Canal has alarmed downstream neighbors Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan as it may reduce their share of Amu Darya water by up to 15-20%, raising the risk of agricultural losses and exacerbated environmental issues such as shrinking the Aral Sea further. Projected Outlook If current construction rates continue, the main canal excavation could finish in 2026, two years ahead of the original 2028 target, though repeated breaches and the need for higher construction standards may delay full operational status. Regional negotiations and technical fixes are likely before the canal reaches peak use. In focus, the Kosh Tepe Canal stands as Afghanistan's largest current infrastructure project, representing both a major economic opportunity and an emerging transboundary water challenge for Central Asia. 2. Geographic Information, Start Point, Kaldar District, Balkh Province, Afghanistan, 37.84797 D. Grayan, 67.77367 DE. End Point, Faryab Province, Traversing Through Jawzyan, Route. The canal runs parallel to the Amu Darya River, north of Afghanistan's arid northern plains. 3. River Basins. The canal diverts water from the Amu Darya River one of Central Asia's largest river systems, fed by glaciers and mountain streams in the Pamirs and Hindu Kush. The Amu Darya Basin supports millions in Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Afghanistan. 4. Specifications. Length, width, depth. Length, 285 km. Width, starts at 152 m, tapering to about 64 m. Average width is 100 m. Depth, approximately 8.5 m. Water carrying capacity, reports suggest around 650 cubic meters per second, QSEX. 5. Bridges. The canal's design includes 17 road and rail bridges at major crossings, notably where the canal intersects with the Kosh Tepe Rail Bridge. However, detailed lists and designs of all bridges are limited in public reporting. 6. Total water capacity. Annual capacity sought. The project aims to extract up to 10 billion cubic meters year from the Amu Darya, estimated to be up to 10-20% of the river's flow. 7. Irrigation Capacity and Activities Purpose To irrigate over 550,000 hectares, previously desert. Land Use Farmland expansion, new settlements, and related agricultural activities are springing up around the canal. Factories Complexes the canal is expected to catalyze agro-based enterprises, processing plants, and rural economic zones, though specifics are evolving with the project's progress.
8. Road infrastructure roads are being constructed on both sides of the canal to facilitate access, transport of goods, and support agricultural and construction activities. 9. Importance for Afghanistan food security. Tackling malnutrition and drought by enabling large-scale farming. Economic growth. Potential to revolutionize agriculture, boost local employment, investments, and exports. Sovereignty. Demonstrates Afghanistan's ability to utilize its natural resources independently. 10. Downstream state concerns. Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Worry about reduced water flow, projected 15-20% lower, impacting their agriculture and possibly dwindling the shrinking Aral Sea further. Fears of desertification, crop failure, and economic instability have been expressed. Diplomatic tensions. Uzbekistan has opened talks but remains wary. Turkmenistan is also concerned but less diplomatically engaged. 11. Water Rights and International Law, Afghanistan's Rights No binding international agreement exists over the Amu Darya. Afghanistan was excluded from Soviet-era agreements. Under international water law, Afghanistan, as an upstream riparian state, maintains the right to equitable and reasonable use, provided it does no significant harm to others. Historical Exclusion, Afghanistan, S. Political instability and being outside the Soviet bloc resulted in its exclusion from regional water-sharing organizations and agreements for over four decades. 12. Environmental, social, and political benefits, environment. Could combat desertification and soil depletion locally. Concern remains for downstream river health and the Aral Sea. Society offers job creation, rural development, food security, and could reduce outward migration. Politics enhances state legitimacy for the government, fosters regional recognition if managed diplomatically. 13. Impact of climate change and global warming. Amu Darya flows. Climate change has already reduced water flows by 10-30% in the basin. Continued glacier melt and unpredictable weather patterns will further stress water availability for all countries in the basin. Canal vulnerabilities. Poorly managed water diversion and expected hotter, drier conditions make the canal's long-term reliability and regional impact more uncertain. 14. Reasons for building the canal address drought and food security. Afghanistan endures severe food shortages and rural poverty. Agricultural expansion. Massive opportunities for large-scale farming, increased exports, and improved livelihoods. Political autonomy. The canal shows self-reliance and national development ambition. 15. Regional exclusion and international response. Why no past invitation? Soviet-era bloc politics, instability in Afghanistan, and security issues sidelined Afghanistan from regional water dialogues. Why no UN intervention? The absence of a formal inclusive agreement and non-recognition issues prevented robust UN or international action. Attention was more on downstream crises, like the Aral Sea, than Afghan rights. Current diplomatic opportunities. The canal may catalyze new negotiations, with the UN and others as potential mediators for a basin-wide deal. 16. Ensuring equitable water rights. Ways forward. A new comprehensive inclusive treaty is needed, one that includes Afghanistan as a full party and is guided by established principles of international water law, equitable and reasonable use, no significant harm. Dialogue and cooperation, cross-border technical cooperation, transparent data sharing, and international mediation monitoring could help ensure all riparians' needs are addressed. 17. Afghanistan's rights to build the canal. Legality. Afghanistan is well within its legal rights to build and use a fair share of the Amu Darya waters, provided it considers downstream impacts. International law supports its claim for equitable use. 18. Amu Darya. Flow and Afghanistan's share. Amu Darya flow. Annual. Mean average. About 74.1 billion M3. High 
wet years, 5% probability, 102 billion M3. Low, dry years, 95% probability, 55 billion M3. Afghanistan's potential extraction. Afghanistan contributes about 30% of the Amu Darya's flow, yet historically used only 2%. It is entitled, by some international estimates, to extract between 27-30% of the flow, translating to about 20 billion M3 year, though the Kosh Tepa project targets 10 billion M3 year. In summary, the Kosh Tepa Canal stands as a monumental transformative project for Afghanistan, promising food security, economic revival, and the assertion of sovereign rights. Its completion could reshape the region's agricultural landscape, trigger long-needed legal and diplomatic reconciliation in the Amu Darya Basin, and force overdue international attention on Afghanistan's historic claims. Its risks, environmental, political, or technical, underscore the urgency of transparent governance, international cooperation, and responsible management 